chapter 10, part 3, and I'm just going to cut right to the middle because this is actually one of the sections I'm the most proud of. So, so enjoy this little tartine of a chapter that starts off like this. Rick, what rhymes with fauna? He looked up from his phone. Madonna? And? Nirvana? And? He locked his phone. Marijuana! Out by the courtyard we found Charlie and a new friend, Ryan. A thin, white, messy-haired Brit, artsy, and doing a fellowship in Germany. Taking advantage of the summer to escape and let himself be a little greasy and a little messy, both smoking a roly. By the way Ryan rolled papers, I knew he was cool. And we both got to talking and we mentioned the concert again. We smoked 1J, 2Js, 3Js, 4. Rolled and saved a sixth, and part of the fifth we had, got it, we had started smoking. We kept agreeing we should get up and leave to go see the concert, but every time someone suggested it, a new stranger would sit down and join our circle and ask us what the plan was. It's incredible how people follow those with a plan. All you had to do was stand around a bar, a lobby, or a Czech courtyard and wait for magic to happen. And it would. A group of hazy, hostile dwellers sailed out. By the time we saw the tip of the astronomical clock, we were held up by a sea of people gathered at the town square. There wasn't space to breathe. We could barely maneuver, tighter than shoulder to shoulder. In the sliver of forceful tourists we were using to squeeze by, we followed that stream upward, inward, almost drowned, until the stage, like an island, came into view and saved us. Expensive television cameras, sounds, lights, and a whole symphony, strings, brass, percussion. They were just rounding out a movement as we dropped anchor by its sweet beach. Behind us, the crowd cheering like a handful of shells landing on a foreign shore. Camera two got love from the jumbo monitor on stage and then panned over to the soloist. The soloist was a tall black man with a round, kind face, and longer dreads than the Danish boys. The soloist closed his eyes, took a mouthful of air, and then released pops by slapping his cheeks. I stood there, ignoring the sinking crowd and lay mesmerized by the scat druid. He scatted ten minutes straight, while each of the players on stage with their bows or trumpets down and eyes up, focused their energies towards the center stage, scattered and transformed sterile breaths into notes of a musical scale. His head bobbed, and so did mine. He had it. He had the crowd. He had his soul, the Earth's soul, and everything revolved around him under the sea. The whole of us, the crowd, turning into some sunken terracotta army. I had never heard such beautiful nonsense come out of any man's mouth quite like that before. He knew something about the human condition. He knew things even he didn't understand. After the scat ended, there was a pause, and the conductor waved his arms, and the strings came back. The crowd roared. No man was ignorant of where e'er he had erred. They had heard the word. I shed a tear. The performance had ended, ended once and for all. Those sounds now reverberate over the surface of the earth, never to be heard again, only felt. I'm sure the muse's powers come from these vibrations, the ones played by masters of the craft. For music isn't something that disappears at the end of the concert, 
It's something that is played in the moment, then sent out open-endedly to decompress between the ripples of our atmosphere. Like how when a stadium show is over, and in the parking lot you find other rappers, other scatters, other drummers trying to make a living. The vibrations never disseminate, never dissimulate. They are stored in the unconscious and reimagined during intense moments of improvisation. Notes and words and double helix of two pages twisted in half, two staves or staves, brass, bass, <laughs> bass and treble intertwined. Words exist. Three, four, five, the beat, Rick, beatnik, the flow, I, oh my. They must seep into the writer's mind and then spontaneously form physical, albeit symbolic, attributes. Great minds are never wasted. Their ideas live on in the ocean of our water words of sea language, a field of space-time filled with books read in loud and novels psychically remembered. Aspiring scriveners sailing together or alone in vessels of ink, one word after another, charting land and ideas, three cheers for cryptomnesia, or as Jung put it, concealed recollection. Kerouac, Zorba, and Miller live on. Leonard Cohen, Miles Davis, goddamn Pythagoras live on. Until the term is looked up, these, impre these impressions will only serve as a wad of algae caught in the rudder of our minds something messy and gooey as we sail outwardly into a sea of language, a sea of people, a sea of love, down to the beat, home is the sailor, and farewell.